Well, thank you very much. Now, let me let me hasten to point out that I had the help of some uh, some pretty good uh, analysis, especially from my good friend in Athens, Michael Chiotinis, who um, had been um, looking at Syriza from very early on, actually intervening on Syriza and urging them to develop a uh, credible program, right? Rather than a kind of a utopian wish list. Originally, they were they were focused on you know long term demands, all of them very very positive and edifying, but. Uh, not especially realistic. So Michael Chiotinas was instrumental in in prodding them to uh, to get to get to boil it down to an, a number of specific things. Now let me ju- let me just make some sweeping, glittering generalizations. If, if I may, just real quick, and then I'll yeah. get out of your way. Suffice it to say, Webster, it happened at about the same time as Occupy Wall Street, and they didn't go that route, did they? The Occupy Wall Street route. They actually made demands, and they managed to get out right. of the diapers, which is exactly where the Occupy Wall Street people still remain. That is exactly right. I'm afraid uh, Chris Hayes on MSNBC this week said, Imagine Occupy Wall Street taking over a government, something they never, they would never do and they never really wanted to do. Uh, but he said that's the idea with Syriza, and this is exactly wrong. And for the U.S. audience, the thing to understand about Syriza is how radically different this is from what you've been sold in the recent past as uh, left liberal, progressive uh, politics, radical politics, radical left politics – or anything of the sort. And let me just uh, point out a number of things. Syriza is the negation of Occupy Wall Street. Everything is opposite, Uh, especially the idea of an economic program, and particularly the fact that the Syriza party, which has now taken, it's essentially one one seat or two seats, according to your count, short of the absolute majority in the Greek parliament and is now governing in a coalition with a, with a um, conservative uh, anti-austerity po- uh, group. The, the, Syriza, the essence of Syriza is to struggle for mass traction economic demands. And the most obvious are no more austerity. Roll back killer cuts, roll back genocidal austerity measures, right? Don't let more Greeks die. 3,000 suicides are attributed to the dictates, the austerity plan imposed by the International Monetary Fund, the European Central Bank, and the European Union. And the, the hallmark of Syriza is no more austerity, no more cuts. Restore the cuts that have been made. Restore pensions, restore uh, unemployment benefits, uh, increase the uh, minimum wage, uh, and and similar things. So this is absolutely different from the typical left liberal mushhead here in the United States, right? If you take your cue from Amy Goodman or Michael Moore or Noam Chomsky or Gnome, as I've always called him. They don't have any mass traction economic demands. The Democratic Party does not have them. Obama does not even have a jobs program after, what, seven years of depression, six years of world economic depression and national economic depression. What Syriza has is a series of these, um, of these mass traction demands. And the second thing, we'll go through some of them. I'd like to illustrate for you the Salonika platform, which is what they just uh, ran on. But there's also this other question is what what do you call yourself? Right? Uh, this is the New Deal. They say New Deal repeatedly in English. Uh, you can see what it is about this country of ours that the world, uh, you know, um, admires and it's it's this idea of the franklin d roosevelt new deal so today uh one of the syriza cabinet members called for a pan european new deal so again economic demands and i want to tell you first of all what you're not going to find you're not going to find a big hue and cry about global warming you're not going to find a big hue and cry against infrastructure be it 
pipelines, ports, electrical grids, uh, other kinds of um, of ec- economic uh, activity, right? Sponsored by government. There, m- most countries in the Western world have anti infrastructure parties now, and it's these are these are funded by George Soros and people like this. But when it comes to Syriza, there's none of that. There's nothing about multiculturalism in the sense of identity politics. This is a program that that treats the Greek people as a united entity, in other words, a single entity, and it attempts to um, to deal with the economic crisis that they're they're facing, to to help Greek working people to survive and thrive, and to defend their existence. And, and at that level, the only the only distinctions it knows are distinctions of uh, of income. Right? Are you rich? Are you not rich? That's the um, the essence of that. So mass traction economic demands, the, the absolutely ruthless, rigorous refusal of wedge issues, the things that can split city against country, uh, one ethnic group, one religious group, one racial group against another. None of that. It's all aimed at the, um, at the bankers, we might say, at the, at the oligarchs, as of course the Greeks say, because this is the uh, you know the, the the homeland of uh, Plato, who taught us about uh, oligarchs. So um, this is what they what they ran on, and I urge people here in the United States study what they have done. Uh, you've got to try to imitate this. Now we shouldn't just sit back as Chris uh, Hayes seemed to be doing and simply say, "Well, uh, what does this mean for us?" Or I've read some other sort of well-meaning or not so well-meaning leftist uh, comments, right? What what does this mean for us? It means that this is what you've got to try to duplicate. And let me say without further ado, the united front against austerity is the most explicit, the most obvious anti-austerity entity that we have in this country. I'm p- very proud to be associated with it. it. This was founded in New York City just one day before Superstorm Sandy. I think it was the the 29th and 30th of uh, October uh, at at your uh, facility at the time, right? So there we were. Um, And the the emphasis on the New Deal, you can see the United Front Against Austerity and the Tax Wall Street Party are the most explicit, the most coherent expressions of the New Deal that we have. So in that sense, the spirit of Syriza, if you want to get close to something that looks like Syriza, well, it's the United Front Against Austerity as a think tank, as a programmatic entity. And then it's, uh, of course, the Tax Wall Street Party, which says we're going to solve this uh, problem that we have, this economic crisis. This is going to be uh, at the expense of, of, uh, of Wall Street. Well, hold on. We have a time problem because we've got to okay. go on break. Friends, we're speaking with sure. Webster Tarpley. He called it. Alexis Cypress and Syriza are now running the country of Greece. We'll be right back with them right after this. Good friends, welcome back. Let's get right back to it. Uh, Webster Tarpley is our guest. Tarpley.net is his website. Uh, you can get lots of great information there. A lot of his interviews are there, including every one that he's ever had here on INN. And uh, Webster, you were talking about the, the program in Greece that's, that's coming out. And I just want to add a reminder a little bit later. I'm going to circle back and talk about what the Greeks could be up against uh, if we can do that too. So back to where Absolutely, you were. Absolutely, and I'm sure they're aware of it. Um, let's, let's just start with, compare uh, Syriza, which is the characteristic expression of the, uh, what can we say, progressives, leftists, um, new dealers, because they certainly qualify. Compare that to Occupy. And let's just look at it from, from a number of points of view. Program is the main thing we're going to talk to. Let's just just mention the idea that Syriza has an articulated program of, of economic demands, above all economic. There are some demands for re-democratization to diminish uh, the authoritarian character of government, right, to restore workers' rights and things like that. But there's nothing like um, – campaign finance reform or things like this as a big a big topic right i'm sure they're they're sympathetic to reducing the power of money but their idea is to reduce the power of the oligarch so program and again it means mass traction economic demands it doesn't mean give more money to the securities and exchange commission or something like this 
There's the question then of leadership. You will have seen this remarkable individual, Alexis Tsipras, uh, former member of the youth organization of the Greek Communist Party, leftist activist, um, obviously a remarkable individual. The finance minister, Varoufakis, looks like he's also um, a very special kind of person. The defense minister, and this is important too, if you're a, uh, if you're a right-winger listening in, and if you're a uh, libertarian, you're a right-winger, why don't you look at this guy, Kamenos, K-A-M-M-E-N-O-S. He speaks French. He comes on the internet giving uh, speeches in French. Uh, this Kamenos is the guy who said, Europe is run by German neo-Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> so attacking Merkel and uh, Schäuble, the the, um, the finance minister of Germany, and, and he's that also there's has, reparations that they still owe Greece. <laughs> reparations that he's not. In other words, what you see is doing is he's building up a great rhetorical platform for the sure. uh, for the negotiations. One anyway, second, they have deep- leaders. This is a, uh, listen, you anarchists who supported Occupy, you dupes. You've got to have leaders and you can't pretend that you don't have leaders because even if you pretend you don't have them, you will have them. They'll just be meeting behind your back and duping you. Yes. I just wanted to say Varoufakis, the uh, finance minister, first of all, he used to teach right there in our audience in the University of Texas, right? Number one. Number two, well, do you have no, a relationship it's important, with him? Above all, for him, right? He gave a speech. He sent a 20-minute address to the founding conference of the United Front Against Austerity. Uh, and this is now the finance minister. This is the guy who says that uh, the time for subjection is over, that uh, this suffocating austerity imposed these cuts and the destruction of the social safety net. This is impossible. Varoufakis also, uh, to show that his heart's in the right place, and this is absolutely critical. The International Monetary Fund, the European Central Bank, and the European Commission, made up of Eurogarchs, Eurocrats, and not a few neo-fascists also, but they imposed this thing where the Greek government has to start firing government employees. And it turned out that one of the groups of victims were the cleaning ladies, the cleaning women, the charwomen, if you will, of the Greek foreign ministry. So he said, I'm rehiring all of them. It's a group of 30 or 40 or 50 women who had been keeping this ministry, right, the buildings, this, you know, cabinet department, keeping it clean. And how did he get the money? He fired a bunch of consultants. And these consultants were generally (laughs) bloodsuckers from the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and so forth. And those people were getting rich off the tragedy of Greece, right? So he said, you are all fired. And I'm going to re I'm going to rehire these charwomen. So there's a leader. OK, occupy your anarchists. You you don't believe in leaders, but the Greeks emphatically do. So program leadership. Then there's the question of organization. How was this assembled? Right. Syriza is an increasingly united group, but still not sufficiently united. It's a kind of a united front or confederation hopefully becoming a federation and then a single body uh, of uh, left parties, grouplets, groupuscules, organizations, all manner of formations. Some of them have their uh, you know, identities still carved out. Some of them are tending to, uh, to merge. And that was patiently put together on a united front basis. And again, we're the united front against austerity. So we Try to incorporate um, this kind of stuff. So you want to have an organization and you've got to subordinate your, your demands. For example, somebody might say, well, for me, the polar bears are the be all and end all. Sorry, you've got to subordinate that. Uh, for me, it's um, what's going on in um, Indonesia, you know, East Timor, whatever. No, that's got to be subordinated. We're doing mass traction economic demands, things that – the average person uh, can recognize as being uh, a, a lifeline, right? A means of survival in the midst of an economic crisis. And then there's strategy. And the strategy has been don't get suckered into approving any austerity measure any time. No way. 
and they tried, right? This was like, these were like the temptations of Christ in the wilderness, right? They were <laughs> offering all different things. And uh, Tsipras and Varoufakis and the rest of them c correctly realized, no, you've got to reject all these things. Now, it's it, obviously the case in Greece that the depression has been extremely severe. It has never been really a rich country. This was raped by the British at the end of World War II. Um, by the spring of 1945, uh, what, 70, 70 years ago, most people in the United States hated Churchill about as much as they hated Hitler because of what the British had done in massacring the Greeks. They sent in, this is where they sent in this General Scobie and Churchill said, treat that like a conquered province, right? Don't let those Greek communists or leftists or socialists make any kind of a comeback. Churchill was betting on the monarchists who had supported uh, Hitler. So uh, all of that is uh, the history. But now those, uh, those communists, even though they're really not communists anymore, have made a, uh, a comeback. But notice again, in a coalition with conservative <laughs> anti-austerity people who do not accept the idea that Germany should dictate the economic destruction uh, of Greece. So this is uh, the, the economic crisis that they've gone through is generated. It comes off the U.S. and British world derivatives crisis of 2008, 2009. It's, it's also magnified by the fact that Greece had come under the influence of Goldman Sachs and Goldman Sachs had sold them a bunch of derivatives with the express argument that by buying these derivatives, the Greeks could mask their uh, public debt and therefore meet the criteria for joining the, uh, the euro, which for them is, a, is a, good, uh, a good idea. Let me just make a parenthesis on this, right? You see a lot of half-baked, uh, you know, misinformed, or worse, uh, people, uh, especially in the English-speaking world, right, British and U.S., saying, oh, they've got to get out of the euro, or they want to get out of the euro. No, no, no. The, the Syriza position has always been they wish to remain within the euro because this is to their advantage. A lot of people just don't get that. Oh, we're against the euro. Well, if you're against the euro, you're essentially acting as a tool for the British and the British pound and or for the U.S. dollar and the, and the, uh, and the Federal Reserve System because that's the competition. The euro is the competition. And the Greek, um, the party, for political reasons, they realized if you come along with a fairly radical program of the type that Syriza has and then, then turn around and say, we're leaving the euro, that is going to make you vulnerable to scare propaganda. And the scare propaganda was tried in the past month. We saw Merkel of Germany coming out. We saw Samaras, the defeated austerity ghoul prime minister, IMF puppet in Greece. They came out and said, if you vote for Syriza, Greece will leave the euro. What, what, they, what Merkel means when she says Greece will leave the euro is she's saying she will force Greece out of the euro, which... Uh, I can't imagine how she could really think she could do that, but she, she said she was going to try. Uh, that was supposed to scare the Greek voter. Then Hollande, right before Charlie Hebdo, two days before Charlie Hebdo, Hollande came out in that famous interview where he said that he wanted the sanctions against Russia to come to an end. He also said, look, the Greeks have the perfect right to vote for whoever they want. So he undercut the scare propaganda. Uh, but uh, you can f still find people. You could find people on Russia Today or CBS News saying Syriza wants to leave the euro. No, they don't. <laughs>